Azama is one of the most tragic units in all of Fire Emblem. This series has some really bad units. A lot of units that will never amount to anything. Units that games entice you into training, only for them to grow into less effective versions of units that you already have. And units that just don't exist for long enough to make any meaningful impact. But what makes Azama such a tragic case is different from all those other units. He should be amazing, having some of the most impressive stats and growth rates in the entire game, but he's stuck in a class that won't let him use his monstrous offensive stats. Azama starts in Monk, a class that's locked to using staves, and he joins at level 7, meaning it'll take quite a bit of staff spamming to get him to the point where he can promote and start using a weapon. But luckily for Azama, we're playing Birthright, a game that provides units with some of the best class flexibility in the series. But will this be enough to save him from his starting situation? To help me answer this question, I'm joined by Sunny, a contributor to the most popular Fire Emblem Fates mod, which is working to expand the game's support system to include unique conversations between every pair of characters in the game. Sunny also plays Fates at a high level, and has recently finished a playthrough using Azama as a primary combat unit. So let's see how he fares. Azama is another one of the characters that joins in Chapter 8 in Hinoka's group. He starts as a level 7 monk, with pretty impressive base stats. Even in Monk, he has 9 strength and 10 defense, which is better than a lot of your units at this time, but he just can't use those stats because he is staff locked. It's a really funny way to start, honestly. I don't think any staff or any of the game comes with such impressive stats. It's like, alright, you need to free this man from his class, which is trapping him, but it is unfortunately a little difficult. We are in Fates, so there are multiple ways to do that. He has options to either Heart Seal, gain an A plus support to get a Friendship class, or gain an S support to get a Marriage class. But all of these come with pretty significant trade-offs. There's also the option to get to level 10 by Staff Spamming in order to gain enough experience to promote, which is also a pretty valid option, but none of these are the most ideal way to be raising a unit in Birthright. No, especially because if you can just hold forward, you may as well. So if you're heal spamming him to promote that way, it's slower than doing other options. And because he can't attack yeah. without uh, spending a seal, it's also kind of hard to get a support gains up. Especially because of Monk's pair of bonuses. Monk gives two magic, two luck, two resistance. So yeah, that's not great. <laughs> yeah. Since most of your units in early game Birthright are going to be physical, boosting magic and resistance really isn't very useful. I, I don't even think Orochi really benefits from the extra magic because I think she wants a defensive partner more than anything for her pretty poor bolt for combat, so it's just, again, really, really rough start. Orochi would much rather start doubling anything that she can, which she can do from her joining map, and Azama is not the one that's making that possible. But just look at this man's growth, 55% strength in Monk, 60% speed in Monk, 40% defense in Monk. Considering what Monk's class growths are, this is, it's really sad that he has to be strapped in here. Because these are like pretty similar to Camilla's offensive stat growths. Yeah. And if you look at his pair of bonuses, those are also insane. One strength at C, one speed at B one defense at A and an extra strength at S. It's crazy. Early strength and early speed are, in my opinion, some of the most important early pair of options to get because they allow you to supplement things a lot easier. I think the avoid tag team's a little shaky though, but it's what it is. But I also just really like playing an attack stance. You would much rather have extra boost to hit, but at least being next to a unit does provide the innate plus 10 hit if they're unpaired, so it's not really an issue. He'll still be able to help someone like Hayato hit with his axe, even if it doesn't bring him to 100%. He does at least start with D rank stave. Sakura starts at E rank. Doesn't the uh, Sun Festival give more experience than the Bloom, so it's actually yes. slightly easier to staff spam him up because of that? Yeah. Jacob does also start with D rank staves, but he will probably have a similar magic stat. So Jacob is probably going to have more overall utility just because he can see combat in addition to heal, mm -hmm. while Azama is just stuck on Sun Festival duty. He at least doesn't have to deal with E-rank hell like Sakura, having to do 20 uses of Bloom Festival in order to even get access to Sun Festival, but still not the greatest position to be in. Sakura also has an easier time training up because she has that map in uh, Branch of Fate where it's easy to just build up her staff rank pretty easily and just yeah. you have to do that in future runs. 
like as a healer, his magic stat growth is really not great. A lot of his magic stat comes from his class base to begin with, and only having 7 from monk bases and a 30% growth in monk. He really isn't going to be the best magical unit, but that's more than made up for by his ability to be bulky at least. Mm -hmm. But you need to get him into a physical class, and his magic can work because this is fate and stats are very malleable, but it's an uphill battle. He's definitely far from your worst magic user in this route, just because most units have 0 or 5% magic growth, so... Well, it's also enemies have really low res, which means you don't need as much magic as you do in the other routes, but you still need some, and yeah. this is just barely enough, I find. So yeah, how do you usually use Azama in your playthroughs? I am a fan of the instant promote and just get him into Great Master because then he's like pretty similar to Camilla Satwise. He's slower, but his bulk and strength are comparable. You're stuck yeah. in E rank hell in Great Master, which is really tragic, but you can build up his lance rank by using it for dual striking and just having him eat up hits. It's probably not the best options I have learned doing a little bit more digging into this guy, but it works and it also is just renewal is a really nice skill to have and you can yeah. get that pretty quickly with an early promotion. So when does Azama usually get to level 10 in your experience? Uh, I want to say I got him to 10 on the uh, map where you get Reyna, which is chapter 10 or 11. It's a pretty reasonable level to get to using a weapon, but again, it's still going to take a bit of time in order to mm -hmm. get him to actually be contributing in a way that's not just staff spamming for his own self-improvement. Chapter 11 is actually earlier than you can get a friendship class unless you're like doing paralogs just to build his supports. If he's building his friendship with Subaki, he needs at least five maps to do that. And he has chapter eight, chapter nine, chapter 10, chapter 11, that's four maps. And he would only be able to get to a plus rank after a fifth map, which would be like Paralog 1 or Invasion 1. Invasion 1 is probably the better option because Paralog 1, you generally have other things you want to do on that map for support games, I find. Or yeah. just general training, like, I don't know, Hayato, for example, if you're doing that early. Staff spamming, if you're playing at a casual pace, will probably get you to Great Master a little bit before the minimum possible map requirements for fully building your friendship class. And it also leaves Azama free to work on his marriage option, if you desire. I think it's good to get him married because his paralogue is actually pretty good for experience. You get yeah. enemies like eight levels above the curve, it's really nice. And it also has a few stationary enemies, right? <laughs> Probably about a third to half of that map is stationary enemies. And the Berserkers, usually with, you know, low defense, low res, it's pretty easy to feed those kills to other units. The sad thing about his daughter is that she was not blessed with the same godly stat growths as Azama has, so she usually won't end up quite as busted as a fully trained Azama. You can make her work because she still gets decent class options through yeah. Azama's and inheritance, but it's an uphill battle. Her design's fun if that's anything though, the star eyes. I'd say the worst thing about Mitama is that she's a woman just because she doesn't have access to Great Master and she's stuck with P Priestess, and Birthright doesn't even have the decency to give you a Shining Bow. It's so sad. Well, I, I, it's just, you give this kid such good physical stats, and what do you do with her after that? You just make her into a copy of her dad that doesn't even surpass her. But yeah, Monk is still a pretty solid class, for the skills at least. You do have mm -hmm. Miracle, which is still better than nothing, but the skill that's really nice is Rally Luck. It grants plus 8 luck, unlike the other rallies, which only grant 4, which means plus 4 hits, plus 4 avoid, and plus 4 dodge, which is really impactful. Especially in late game birthright when you're going up against tons of berserkers. The Rally Luck actually zeroing out some of my crit chances I checked is so good, and it's you get it earlier than you get all the other rallies, and that four hit difference is really, really useful for just increasing liability so that you don't have to reset or have everything go wrong, because I feel like Koshin weapons just have kind of poor hit across the board. If you're training like a Oni Savage Hayato, Rally Luck is one of the best things you could be using. Which is such a funny thing to think about in Fire where Luck is considered a dump stat, but it's actually a legitimately good stat if you can just get a lot of it. And of course, like, 
Rally Skill Felicia will technically give slightly more hits, but that also requires you to use a Heart Seal on Felicia, which you might not always want to be doing. I, I think she's an okay candidate if you want to be silly, but you usually have better options, yeah. Plus, Rally Skill doesn't even boost dodge and avoid like Rally Luck does, which is one of its biggest draws. And the skill that you really like the Monk class land for is, of course, Renewal. Renewal grants plus 30% HP healing at the start of every player phase, which is kind of crazy. I don't think it's as good as Soul as a healing skill because Soul works on enemy phase, so you technically have more health than you have actual health if it procs. Yeah. And it also can just heal you for more. But you don't have as much access to Hero and Birthright, so this is your next best option. And it's a really good option at that in terms of just letting you keep moving forward and not have to worry about your defensive benchmarks as much outside of just getting survival. And the fact that this is on Great Master, which has, I believe, the highest class bases in the game. Great Master is just a very good class if you're willing to use Naginatas. It's kind of crazy. It's so stacked. It has an 8 base strength stats, 8 base speed, 6 base defense, and 7 base resistance. That's crazy. Yeah! <laughs> On top of that, it has 6 base magic, so Bolt Naginata is a very real option for Izama. Mm -hmm. And the other magic Naginata class option you really have is Falcon Knight, which has really, really poor bulk. So getting a yeah. bulky class that has access to that is really nice. Of course, the issue with Great Master Azama is that he is still stuck in E rank lances, meaning that he is probably not going to be outperforming your other lance users by very much. He does have a good speed lead just due to being early promoted if you choose to go that route, but his offensive stats are generally going to be pretty comparable to someone like Oboro. Mm -hmm. His bulk will be superior, but that's going to yeah. eventually fall off as, you know, people level up, they promote themselves and get the promoted class bases. And not being able to use the higher might's weapons, and especially the effective weapons unless he's done 20 combats with lances, does often leave you in a difficult spot in trying to train Azama along with your other units if he's early promoted. You can do it if you focus on using him as a dual strike partner, but that does interfere with your other support rank building, so... You have to play around that if you want to race his lance rank, which you can do. It's a matter of if you want to do it, though, and that's just kind of a problem. Yeah. With birthrights, uh, easy access to one to tier range in both ninjas and diviners, though. It's a lot easier than raising weapon ranks in early conquests for reclasses. I'll s I at least appreciate that a lot. The big deadline for wanting to be at D rank lances, I find, is usually chapters 14 and 15. Chapter 14 has the large cluster of sword cavaliers which you really want to be using the Sword Catcher for to do effective damage and easily one round with basically anyone with the lance that you send there, as long as they have access to the Sword Catcher at D rank. And mm. ch Chapter 15 has the Wolf Skin, which you get the Beast Killer in the map right before that. You can pretty easily send in any lance units into the, a horde of Wolf Skin and they will probably die. Which is really nice because it's also a bunch of experience. So if you have Azama, ACD rank lances. If you really want to use him, you can get him to level 5 promoted and get renewal right there, which is really nice. Because in playing for this, I was planning on getting D lances just by that time, and I don't think I had to really slow down super much and never noted that I was playing slow to get him experience, just it just happened. Using one of your better combat units in combat generally will get you pretty far in this game. Mm hmm. It's a birthright. But unfortunately, using Azama in this way does come with a few pretty major trade-offs because there are some other top-tier Lance units that you want to be training at around this time. He has some pretty stiff competition, especially in the form of Oboro and Silas and Hinoka, who all want that same pool of Lance experience that Azama is just a less efficient user of because he will be leveling up fewer times if he gets that experience than your other units, who will eventually have better long-term prospects than him, unfortunately. Just because he had to promote early in order to get access to lances, well, the other units that I just talked about don't have to promote and have better experience gain as a result. 
Also, their base lance rank is higher, so they have access to things like the Javelin, which makes training their lance rank a lot easier. Oro, Hinoka, and Silas all have access to the Sword Catcher and Beast Killer at base, which Azama definitely does not. It's very sad. It's also just you have to forge a brass form, and that can be a bit of an investment early on, even if you'll use it later. But if you do choose to use Azama, he is a very usable option. He will continue to be useful even after a level 10 promotion to the end of the game, just because his base stats and growths are just so good. And you could always just delay his promotion a little bit, because it's easy to overshoot the uh, level 5 requirement for renewal just with how much experience he can get with yeah. uh, 14 and 15, but again, you have to want to feed those to him. And getting him to level 14 or 15 will probably take longer just because of how staff experience works in Fates. And if you end up promoting him later, he might not end up being able to reach D rank in Lances in order to get that really good pool of lots experience. And at that point, well, it's kind of difficult. Mm -hmm, you have to be willing to spend an arm scroll. Although, he doesn't have to be raised in those two chapters specifically, because there are later sources of really easy experience that you can go into, like the Faceless chapters in 18 and 20, or the Rainbow Sage map in chapter 19, where basically any units can get to a level 20 promotion if they really want to, because the Rainbow Sage map has enemies with zero defense and zero resistance, where you can pretty much use any weapon and one round them, which makes things the very 15 easy. HP Berserkers with capped strength too that you can just drop. Yep. So if you do want to use Azama as a long-term unit, maybe sometimes it's better to just spend early game trying to build his supports and doing all the experience grinding later on. I don't think I have much else to say, so maybe move to reclass options? He is probably best in Great Master just because it lets him take advantage of the monstrous class bases and allows him to make use of physical weapons. But Omioji is also a viable option. It's probably worse just because his magic isn't the best. He does still have a higher base than Hayato, but that is not a very high bar, and he doesn't have magic plus two. He has extra bolt going into it, but you want to use the horse spear, in my opinion, if you're doing a, like bigger combat on Miyoji, and he often won't hit one round benchmarks with that. Although the bulk is probably the best thing about Azama in a magical class, just because most of your other mages in Birthright that aren't in Oni Savage are going to be pretty frail. On Miyoji's such a squishy class. So Azama's access to just his high base defense and decent growth really goes pretty far in allowing him to get experience in opportunities that some of your other mages won't be able to. It does let him continue to provide utility with staves just like Great Master does, and magic is probably going to be better super long term. Because Nora and class staff lower resistance. It also lets you leverage yeah. his uh, higher base staff rank and actually use some of the other staves you might want to. Like, you can use uh, taxing rods to uh, get that far as well. And I think both Great Master and Omiyoji can get to Hexing Rod then, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do want to be using magic if you're going super long term and not doing a shuriken class. But if you're also going super long term with Zama in Great Master, you also get access to the Bolt Maginata, which will probably do just as well as any tome with its higher might. And you also have the better class bases of Great Master. Because of those real high class bases, you can give him a lot of pair up partners to shore up stats where you need them as you need them, which is a lot yeah. of flexibility. If he does go into Omiyoji, he does have Rally Magic, which can provide some much needed utility to some of your less magically inclined mages like Rinka. And it's just really nice to have that and Rally Luck on the same character as well for some role compression. The units that you want the extra accuracy on are probably going to be your mages in Oni Chieftain. And having magic and luck on the same units does help a lot. And eventually he will get Tome Fair, which will mean that his magic won't fall off quite as hard as you might expect it to if you end up hard committing to Omiyoji, but he still won't be your most damaging mage ever. No, it's just good enough, probably. There is the option to use your first heart seal on Azama to let him escape the staff lock. But the class that he gets is Apothecary, which is really, really sad. 
Apothecary Azama actually has impressive stats, like 15 strength at level 7, that's kind of crazy, along with 14 defense. He's gonna ram that strength growth, it's fantastic. But it also comes with the huge downside of being bowlocked. Now, being bowlocked in Conquest is not a bad thing, because Conquest is a player phase game. But Birthright uh, really is not a player phase focused game. You get a weapon, but you want to be able to attack at one range early on, and you just... You can't. Yeah. Your most efficient ways to gain experience with your units is by stacking their stats so that they can see as much combat as they can, killing as many enemies as they can on a single enemy phase, while Azama is really restricted to getting one kill on player phase. And if you're lucky enough to be on a map with a bunch of two range enemies, maybe one, maybe two if you're lucky, kills on enemy phase, which you really need to work for and make sure that your other units aren't messing with, which mm -hmm. his experience gain is probably going to be much slower than your physical units, even like Mozu, who can get to D rank lances and eventually start sword catching and beast killing in chapters 14 and 15. Azama, as an apothecary, really doesn't have opportunities like that in order to get to a level 20 promotion. The only real place where bows are amazing is chapter 11, the flyer map on the boat, but that's still not going to get him anywhere close to a high level promotion, which unfortunate. Well, it's also, I don't think Birthright's maps are as conducive to enemy phasing with bows as some other stuff on Conquest, because there's not as many of those one tile walls and chokes to use bows. So it's even more of an uphill battle because you're getting those one, maybe two kills, and it's not at all as efficient as it could be. And you don't even have a uh, mini bow access. Opportunities to train bow rank do exist if you look for them. They can be useful in chapters 10, 11, 12. Uh, you can maybe argue 13 though. I don't really think that's great for bows. And chapter 16, Pleasure Palace. But even with these stats, Azama is probably not going to be your most useful unit. No, you're just bringing him along to train him to eventually improve. And like, you'd think his 14 defense would make him amazing, but why is he even going to be enemy phasing? He is two range locks. It's just there for decoration. It makes him look nice. Yeah, and like, eventually he will get access to some of the best skills in the game because Apothecary is such a stacked class if you ignore the bow lock. It gives him access to Potent Potion, which multiplies the effects of tonics and healing items by 1.5, which is kind of crazy. It means vulnerabilities heal for 15, and your standard tonics like strength and speed give 3 instead of 2, which can be impactful in meeting benchmarks. It's just nice to get those skills later when you have access to the Apothecary skills in a class that isn't too range locked, but they're so yeah. good, especially early on, because that one point makes a bigger difference with smaller enemy stats. And he also has access to Quick Salve, which is an insane skill. It allows him to heal with a vulnerary or a concoction and attack on the same player phase. It's kind of crazy. It's so good to just not have to waste that action to get healing in a route where you don't have as much reliable healing because, again, you don't have soul for those things on your combat units. But also, the Moon Festival, the equivalent of Physic, heals a lot less at base, so your healers yeah. are doing a lot less healing. The Birthright Physic does two healing plus magic over three. It's very sad. Oh, that's even, terrible! Even a capped magic lease is probably not even doing 15 healing. I guess with staff rank it can get like 16 or 17 maybe, but... I don't remember Elise's cap off the top of my head, but yeah, you're you're not gonna hit 20 at all, I think. Training Azama in Apothecary is really like training Takumi. You're not doing it because they're your best unit. You're doing it because you want to train them in this way. And I wouldn't even say it's Azama's best way to get to level 20 before promotion, because that would probably be through friendship. I'm inclined to agree with that. He does have the option to slowly gain support ranks with Tsubaki or Hayato, 
and eventually get access to the Sky Knight lines or the Diviner line, which do have real enemy phase potential. And I think like Diviner early on with Tomite low enemy res is really strong early. But you're not going to get it early because you still need to wait those five yeah. full chapters in order to get his support to A with Hayato. It's really not great. Those fast supports just aren't doing him any favors. His ability to only fast support with women is not great because even with a fast support, it will take him one, two, three, four, five, six maps to get an S support with Hinoka and Setsuna. Which is still slower than a friendship. Apothecary is still one of the better classes in the game just because it has access to Mechanist, which is the class that most of your units that are physical want to end in. Mechanist is notable for having access to 1-2 range in shurikens, which are probably the weapon type that most of your physical units want to be using. And it brings, again, his really nice stats into that class. And you get the good skills from Apothecary, so I think Apothecary into Machinist is one of the just, it's so much better than Ninja. Yeah. And he does technically have the option to go into Merchant. Merchant has some cool skills being Profiteer, which has a luck percent chance of producing a gold bar after any action on the first seven turns, which can help you with your gold. You would probably rather be using Azama in a combat class, but Merchant is an option. It still doesn't give you access to a good base magic stat though, so Bolt and Legendary Tish Nightingales will probably be less effective in Merchant than mm -hmm. it would be in Great Master. I think its bulk is slightly better, but it's also a lot slower. Yeah. And Azama does need that magic base from his class to function with the Bolt Naginata. Yeah. Apothecary is really more like the Armor Knight class, but for bows. Mm-hmm. Which is really funny, but not really very good. He will eventually get access to Spendthrift and can become a solid boss killer, but in a game with the Hexing Rod and Ryoma and other really good combat carries, you can probably just send two units to kill a boss and be fine. I mean, shoutouts to Reyna, one of the best boss killers in my opinion, just because of her really good class and really good stat growth for it. You need to do some calcs to make sure Reyna survives, but if she does, then yeah, she is probably <laughs> yeah. doing very well. I mean, you can always just build up her guard gauge a little bit earlier in the map, and that's another option too. Yeah, Apothecary is a good class in theory, but in practice and birthright, uh... It's only good after promotion, really. Yeah. If you look at Azamo's combat forecasts, if he's in Apothecary, it's very sad. Even with a Brass Yumi, the most accurate type of Yumi, he only has 97 hit which is before factoring in enemy avoid and weapon triangle disadvantage against a bunch of the swords that appear in the game. It's not great. And he can't even rally luck himself, so you gotta get that from Sakura. It's like that eight skill base is rough. And starting with nine speed, which is two less than base Takumi. Takumi already struggles to double, but Azama having even less speed makes things really hard for him. Well, and Takumi has the crutch of the Fujin Yumi's base might quick drop, which helps him at least hit those one-shot thresholds with a attack stance, but Azama can't really hit that without, like, a really good bow forge. Yeah. Azama just really is not in a good spot if he goes to reclass into Apothecary. Takumi already isn't a very good unit in Birthrights, and just getting someone that's even worse kind of questionable use of resources. You get those good skills early, but they don't matter if you can't actually use them in a meaningful way. So if he does manage to escape his base class through friendship, one of his better options is actually through Subaki. Subaki gives him an early opportunity to train his Lance rank in Sky Knights, and it gives him some decent skills in Darting Blow and Camaraderie. Darting Blow being plus 5 effective speed on player phase, and camaraderie being 10% healing if he's within two spaces of an ally. And both those are genuinely fine skills. Darting Blow helps him with his low speed, as I pointed out earlier, pick up some kills. It's a shame it's uh, 
player face only, but you can at least do that to pick off something. If it's just one enemy in a pack that's slightly faster than another because it's a different class or something. And camaraderie yeah. is just kind of nice healing, it's fine. The main appeal of being in Sky Knights is allowing him to take advantage of its lance access. Just not being staff locked. It's such a shame that it's probably going to be still a little slower than a Genshin promotion, but you can actually build up stats this way, and you're also hoarding less experience to build that lance rank on him this way. If you build Azama in Sky Knight, he will probably have at least comparable stats to Hinoka, and he doesn't need to marry in order to get into Mechanist, which Hinoka does, so very solid option. It's just a matter of where you want to use your early seals. Having an extra flyer is never necessarily a bad thing just because less so flying I think in Birthright and more seven movement. So that's You don't have a, all those mounted characters. If you do really work for it, it is possible to get him to de-rank lances before chapters 14 and 15 and it will be slightly more experience efficient than early promoting him to Great Master immediately. And I think I'd uh, just plan on feeding him 15 rather than 14 because you can just use 14 to coast on the little extra bit of lance experience you need with a few dual strikes. Thankfully, uh, it's only Keaton on that map that has uh, Beastbane, right? None of the other wolf skins have it. Yeah, basically any unit that you want can train their lance rank on that map, even if they're on a horse or on a pegasus, it's nice. Thank you, Birthright, for your lack of skills. You probably aren't going to be staying in Sky Knight super long term because you do have access to Great Master, which is the better Lance Staff class for combat, or Mechanist, which has one to ring shurikens. And also, it's notably for just long term combat in Birthright, neither of those is weak to bows. And yeah. Birthright throws a lot of Bow Knights at you later in the game. There are some enemy spawns that are like three Bow Knights in one turn. If Azama is in Falcon Knight and trying to take that group down, he probably will die. I, I think it's a guarantee, honestly. In theory, having an extra rally can be nice, but if you've friendships to Tsubaki to raise an early combat unit, you are probably focusing more on his combat ability than his support ability. So you probably aren't going to be making very good use of rally speed. And I think Sakura is probably still the better person to put those rallies on because she has similar access. Plus, she doesn't need to go out of her way to build a friendship for it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the rest of the Skynet class skills probably aren't going to be very applicable to Azama just because he doesn't want to be spending really any time in Kinchi Knights or spending enough time to get to level 15 promoted in Falcon Knight either. One again, warding blow is just player phase only, and by the time that you're level 15 at promoted class, it's the part of the game where you want to be enemy phasing everything. And while Amaterasu is nice in that it gives a mini renewal to anyone within two spaces, if you're on the front lines, you will probably either be alone or with another unit that has their own way to sustain themselves. So yeah, it's just not worth it. Yeah, spending the extra 4,000 gold to spend two levels in Kitchen Knight just for that skill. You could probably just buy concoctions for your other unit and have a better time. Probably be cheaper too, realistically. Yeah. And his slightly slower support is with Hayato, just because Hayato joins at the end of Chapter 8, so he can't build supports in Chapter 8 like Tsubaki can. It's not the worst thing to do. I'd say it's still probably worse than Sky Knights, but Diviner allows him to build Tome Rank and gives him access to Magic Plus 2, which if you do want to use Azama as a magical focus unit, might be useful, especially boosting his ability to use the Bolt Maginata. I did some math earlier and that plus two magic actually would make or break a few one round thresholds. So yeah. I, yeah, he wants that. And he does have to suffer in the terrible class bases of Diviner, which has, I believe, either the lowest or second lowest HP and defense just in the entire game. He brings in a bunch of stats, but I don't think it's enough. His base defense and base speed are good enough to let him get by and at least get levels at a faster pace than he would if he was just staff spanning. Or an apothecary. Once you get to a high level in Diviner, you probably don't want to stay in Omiyoji. I mean, you can. It's just another class with terrible class bases and uses Azama's worst attacking stats. But the issue with locking yourself into Diviner is, well, you're going to be stuck with E-rank lances. 
So getting to the Bolt Naginata is just going to take a lot longer than if you either early promoted him to Great Master or went into Sky Knight. And if you want to be using Combat Azama, Bolt Naginata is probably going to be your weapon of choice if you're not in Mechanist. You could maybe go Bazara and pick us one much experience that way, but still not your best option for things. Basara is definitely a very good class. It's pretty comparable to Great Master in that it has access to lances. It trades the staff utility for tome access, which isn't the worst thing because it lets him use the horse spirits, which is one of the best weapons in the game because it grants plus three speed, plus three defense, plus three resistance, which is kind of crazy. He doesn't really even need that because he more wants tome might rather than the stats and bulk from the horse spirit better off with other tomes and tome might in birthright really just isn't there oh yeah so he will probably end up three shotting instead of two shotting and one rounding so not ideal and he has to marry to get vantage so that's not even like a good circumstance because that's yeah the specific marriage you have to get he will be all right if he ends up in diviner but probably not your best option so everything that you do with Zama just ends up having so many trade-offs. It's not great. You're picking your poison, and while that's sometimes fun, it's also sometimes very, very annoying. If he does end up going into Bizarre, he does get some nice skills. Rent Heaven. I wish Rent Heaven was good on the actual magic classes that it was obtained by. Azama is going to be using magical weapons, which means Rent Heaven will proc on the magic stats of enemies, which in late game Birthright is usually going to be zero, unless it's a Dark Knight or Malignite or Sorcerer. Which it does help because those are usually the units that have decent resistance, but it doesn't really do much against the physical focused units. That and Bolt Naginata can't proc skills and that's his a better offensive option usually to actually hit the one round thresholds. So it's just, if it could work with a Bolt Naginata, it would actually like ease a lot of his late game one round thresholds on all enemies because uh, the Sorcerer is the hardest thing for him to one round with the Bolt Naginata, but that would give him an easier time. Quixotic is kind of nice on his armor, just because if he's using the Bolt Naginata, he's not going to have very much avoid to begin with, just because the Bolt Naginata reduces your avoid. So having minus 30 avoid doesn't hurt him by very much. And having the extra plus 30 hits can really help in getting those rates to 100%, and actually making sure that Azama makes forward progress through maps. Mm -hmm. Because his hit rate with the Bolt Naginata is actually kind of shaky the later you go in the game. Especially when yeah. facing axe enemies, you're going to be 60 to 70%, and that's not great. And we forgot to mention his personal skill, Divine Retribution. If the unit has no weapon equipped, adjacent foes suffer half the damage they inflict. So it's basically counter, but worse, but can also stack with counter. If this gave experience on kill, I don't think it does, which is really it sad, but not. if it gave experience, if the enemy suicided on him... Maybe, maybe it would have a use case, Yeah. but it doesn't. It's definitely funny and I feel like it more exists to make him annoying to fight in Conquest, but in practice, in the player's hands, it's kind of a nothing skill. I do remember seeing a clip of Azama with Riggs level ups in HP but not defense, getting attacked by Xander and killing him. <laughs> All right, that's pretty excellent, I gotta admit. But generally, in normal play, it is going to be very bad. No, it doesn't even help reach one round thresholds because it only works when he has no weapon equipped. It's like, if, if it was just counter, but on Azama specifically, it, I think it'd actually be pretty good. But it's not, so he's kind of sad. <laughs> Incredibly sad, I would even say. He does have access to other class sets if he's willing to spend the six or seven maps to get to marriage. Now, is there any class that stands out to you here? I think mostly Ninja from Kagero for sure I can fare. And if you, again, if you want to be funny, Counter from Rinka. Both of those hmm. fulfill the same niche of basically padding out his late game damage in 
Kagura's the better marriage option, but counter works. I mean, if you're only like two or three damage short of reaching one rounds, then counter does help you with that. Because uh, on 10 20 with averages, Azama was two damage short of benchmarks in the final map, and Jurek and Fair got him there, but counter would have also got him there because he was facing, you know, 60 70% hit rates, which probably are going to hit him. That's true. And. If he does go into Master Ninja, that could help with his speed stat, which allows him to get support in other areas where he might need it more, mm -hmm. which can help. His speed stat isn't quite as amazing as some of your other units going into the Ninja class line, so he does appreciate the extra boost. And he brings extra bulk into it, so you can look at where your Azama has gained stats and where he needs stats and make that decision appropriately if he gets Ninja access. Oni Savage also gives him access to tomes, which are generally good, and axes, which gives him the Bolt Axe. His hit rates with the Bolt Axe are never going to be very great, but it is a slightly higher might weapon that's magical. And he also has access to the Oni Shifkin class, which has an even higher defense if you really want him to take no damage. His res really starts to suffer, but... You can also just send him up against packs of physical enemies, because I feel like in Birthright there's a mixed enemy pack that's usually going after you, and then there's a purely physical enemy pack. And you generally have other options to take care of your mages, so mm -hmm. this isn't the worst thing. I think the biggest shame is just that he struggles with his hit rate, so Bolt Axes, you're probably going to be hitting 50s or 60s realistically. <laughs> It's unfortunate that Monk doesn't give luck plus four because it would be funny to stack with Salvage Blow, but life is sad. Birthright gives you, what, about 60,000 gold? It's not as much as Conquest, which gives you, I think, six figures. So there's actually some legitimate benefits for a little bit more money for giving yourself that breathing room, but it's just not worth it. It's so sad that Zama can't rally luck himself to make Salvage Blow proc more. Yeah, because you can't rally your replicas, can you? Oh, you can rally replicas. No, you're, you can't with your own rally. You can. You can. Really? But it's, like, way too late for it to actually matter. Yeah, it's pure technicality at that point. At that point, you want to be forging your shurikens, and enemies are not going to be equipped with shurikens. You would have to sell your iron swords, iron lances, in order to buy more shurikens to forge, which... Eh. Lancebreaker is kind of nice if... Yeah, you have to dip for it, but the lance enemies in the late game do hit really hard. And you can affect your hit rates from enemy sword and axe users with the dual or just normal shuriken if you're going uh, mechanist. But you can't affect your lance hit rates that well. And like, if you're willing to do skip strats in late game birth rates, shove and swap can be helpful. Although, you are probably just going to have Renka and Obro do those, and you yeah. probably don't need more than one user of each skill. You probably also have some other candidates for Shove, just with how good Oni Savage is as a class for giving to other people. There are a few other classes that I think are notable. If you want to do support, Azama, Troubadour through Felicia is a really nice option. It gives him access to the Jantium Aura, which is minus two damage taken by female units within two spaces. Azama is notable in actually having a good defense stat, so he can be sent into range of enemies and survive late game, even with an early promotion, which is really nice if you're getting into butler strategists. Again, brings that decent staff rank, but again, very similar stats to Jacob, just bulkier, stronger. So you're not going to be having that much potency from your staffing. I do yeah. think live to serve is potentially a good healing option if you're sending him with another unit, because then it's effectively self-sustaining for them both. But that's a very niche use case, and relies on them taking similar amounts of damage. He does at least have access to daggers if he goes into Butler, which you can do a lot worse than Butler Azala. Even if you promote early, he will have real stats. Mm -hmm. It's just Discount Master Ninja. <laughs> And if you choose to go into Strategist, Rally Resistance is a rare skill in Birthright. Although, you would probably just want Jacob and Felicia to be doing that instead of Azama, but... Mm -hmm. Or if you're going for certain marriages, Shigure is an option for that too. But hey, at least Azama has the option of being closer to the front lines than most other candidates for Rally Res. Which does give him that flexibility because sometimes if your combat unit gets a little too far ahead, 
you can't always give them the rally support you need to without exposing your rally bots to danger. And Azama's ability to get away with running early also makes him one of the better users of Inspiration, which is a very difficult to access level 15 skill. But with an early promotion, he will probably be getting there faster than most of your other units will also not die to a stiff breeze. Mm -hmm. Strategist is very, very squishy. Leveling up in that class is a nightmare. Yeah, but his decent performance with daggers in Butler will let him get most of the way there, and she can dip into Stratus later to get the skill, which is really nice. And it's also just stacking auras isn't necessarily a bad thing on a unit that can, again, as you said, just sit in the front. It's good support. I think there are better options, but Azama once again hits the benchmark of good enough, in my opinion. Samurai is also a very important class for most units in Birthright, just because it gives access to Vantage. Now, if you are unable to reach your one round thresholds, then having Vantage is really nice, because before the enemies start hitting you on the second enemy phase, you can use Vantage, get that third hit in, and have them dead before they deal damage to you, which really helps with survivability. And as was said earlier, with if you going a magic Azama, you're going to be hit, hitting closer to three hit KO. So Samurai is probably a better option there. Physical, it's yeah. straightforward enough that he can hit the Warner KO benchmarks. That I value Vantage less there. But if you're going for a magic Azama, it's probably a pretty good option. There are still some enemies that you have to like really, really put resources in to get to one round thresholds. If you're in a dagger class like the Wyvern Lords and a few Berserkers with very high HP. So even then, if you're in Mechanist, Vantage can be useful. I'd even also say some Great Knights if you can't Sting Shuriken them because you're facing other enemies that uh, have relevant benchmarks that enemy phase that Sting Shuriken yeah. doesn't hit. I think it's just a matter of options though between that and getting other damage skills that help him. That flexibility is at least nice, which is, again, good enough. Samurai notably also has a Master of Arms promotion, meaning that he can continue to use lances if he goes into Master of Arms, which is nice. He doesn't have to start from E rank. Especially having to start from E rank swords, that's a nightmare. Yeah. And if you want to do other requesting with physical classes that uh, are Sword, Lance, Axe, Master of Arms lets you act, have that as an intermediary point. He probably doesn't want any of the other skills he gets from Samurai. Steel Strength isn't going to be useful when you're three-shotting and killing them before their second attack anyways. Life and Death cuts down in his bulk. He probably doesn't want to be using swords for sword fare. And if he's in a lance using class, Astra will not proc if he's using the Bolt Maginata. So it's really not great for him. But Vantage is what he's really here for. Mm -hmm. So again, going back to the boss going thing where you're maybe life and death with a uh, Spencer from Apothecary, but that you don't really need to do that in Birthright. It's just if you want it to be funny. Because again, you yeah. have the Hexing Rod, and you don't also have the amount of brave weapons that give those damage skills as much potency. You start so close to the final boss in that map anyways that having three or four units just gang up on that guy is probably going to be enough. You don't need to go super stacking. No, you can play that map very casually. Have Azura sing, and sing for four more units with your other shelter users, and hey, that guy's dead. Congratulations. As long as you can hit that like 30% hexing, it's just, you can also just double sing for a single unit and it works out fine too. You don't even have to gang up. Yeah, Archer is a class that exists. I think it's slightly faster than uh, Apothecary, but that's kind of all it has going for it. Again, no shining bow to be funny with bow fare. If you wanted to do that in like Kinchi or something. The practicality of raising Azama's support with Mozu or Setsuna, you, it's, it's very slow. At least he has a fast one with Setsuna. That's true, but building support ranks between a staff locked unit and a bow locked unit is so sad. I'm guessing you'd probably have to spend, let's be realistic, eight or nine maps to actually get that done. I mean, you can be slowing down and making sure that you feed Satsuna like five kills with Azama in her backpack, but probably not how you want to be spending your time. No, you got a whole life to live. So I think it would probably even be easier to just reclass into Apothecary and just 
train them together like that. <laughs> Just because that way, he, at yeah. least he can attack and build that way. Quick Drill can help with reaching one round thresholds, but this is birthright. By the time you get to the maps where combat really matters, it's going to be on enemy phase, so Quick Draw and Certain Blow matter a lot less. Yeah, it's... It's so funny just going from Conquest to Birthright and just Archer, which is normally such a desirable class, just becomes kind of a miserable thing that you want to get out of. Yeah. And I think the last class that we haven't talked about is Spearfighter, which is another Lance class, which is Amal likes. It is another avenue of accessing Basara, which a side raise to Great Master, which he doesn't complain about. Mm-hmm. I think the big thing that stands out to me is Lance Fair, if you're going for Bolt Naginata, is legitimately yeah. useful for hitting those one-round thresholds. The fact that you have to go back into Spear Master in order to get Lance Fair means that you're taking a big hit in your damage output if you're in Spear Master just because it doesn't have much of a base magic stat, so you have to spend the extra 2,000 gold to get back into Basara or Great Master, which not ideal, but hey, plus 5 damage is plus 5 damage. And if it makes your combat, if it if it takes you those one round thresholds, it's worth that money. It's just a bit of a shame. So yeah, Azama has real stats, but... <laughs> you just need to find a way to use them. Yeah. Now, Azama does suffer from having very strong competition in Birthright. If he goes the most direct way of using him, which is instant promotion to Great Master, his stats will look impressive until you look at what Obero can do. Now, Obero doesn't need to staff spam in order to get to do combat. She starts with C rank lances, which means that she has access to a lot of weapons that Azama just can't use yet, including the Iron Naginata, Javelin, Steel Naginata, and Guard Naginata, and later on when you get to level 2 shops, you will have the Sword Catcher, the Dual Naginata, the Bolt Naginata, and once you get to Benny in chapter 14, you will have the Beast Killer, which Azama will need to spend 20 combats getting to with the Brass Naginata. Obero also has the benefit of her really crazy personal skill, Nor Enmity, which just allows her to deal plus 3 damage to all the enemies where extra damage actually matters. It's kind of insane. So instead of looking at her strength stat like it's 14, it's effectively 17, plus you take into account the higher mites of the weapons that she's actually going to be using, and yeah, Obero just seems very comparable to an instant promotion Azama, even with Azama's crazy stats. And like, even without Nor Enmity, a Steel Naginata takes her to the same might with a Brass, if I recall, because it's 5 over yeah. that. Two speed less isn't really super relevant, because she's just gonna get sung by Azura and that makes up that difference and Azama's still doubling most things at that point in the game, so congrats, Obero's also there with you now. Her bulk is comparable. And it's not even like Azama's access to Apothecary makes him so much better than Obero because Obero also has access to Apothecary Mechanist, so Azama doesn't even have that over her. Well, and if you really need bulk on her and you're hitting the one-round thresholds pretty handily, you can give her the guard Naginata and she can see a lot more combat that way too. So. Effectively, when you're raising Azama through the maps of chapter 14 and chapters 15, this is your competition for that experience, along with Silas and Hinoka, who are also going to be extremely good. And you're probably only going to end up getting two of them to a level 20 promotion or a level 5 promoted skill. And Obro just not having to promote early and slow down her experience makes her a very, very attractive target for investments over Azama. Oh, and all that's worth because her late getting potential because Nor Enmity is a good damage skill in Birthright where I feel like those are really hard to come by. And yeah. she gets the extra level, so her bulk is comparable, if not superior in some cases. Yeah. She makes a really good case. And also something that I do think it's worth praising for is her slightly better skill growth and more time to use it. Azama's accuracy can be a bit of a struggle, so over having better accuracy is really nice to see. Of course, if you look at Azama's growth rates, he does generally have higher growth rates than Obero, but that doesn't entirely make up for the sheer number of levels that Obero will be able to get compared to Azama. So I think the only thing that he'll be beating her on is just magic and 
that's basically it when they're at comparable levels. Now, the one big appeal that Azama does get over Oboro is access to Renewal, which is the 30% healing at every turn, which is really nice, but it's made less impactful when they go into Mechanist if they want to be physical units, and they both have access to Quick Salve and Potent Potion, which already provide enough sustain without Renewal. I also like Renewal because sometimes you do just get unlucky and take more damage than you can really reliably heal. And yeah. it's also a bit of money saving, which you can use later for more seals or later on heal items if you need those again. And it also just, in terms of unit feel, does just feel really nice to see him heal at the start of every single turn. But once you get to the point where Azama's instant promotion gets to level 5 and he goes into Mechanist, or Obero gets fed that same number of kills and gets to level 20 promotion and goes to Mechanist, Obero kind of just looks better. Yeah. She has one more HP, three more effective attack due to her skill, three more effective speed, six more hits, five more avoids, the same dodge, two more defense, and five more resistance. Obero is, is really just big good. Amount. Yeah. At this point, the only thing that Azama has over Obero is his slightly earlier access to the level 15 skills and renewal. Those two things can be very impactful if you use them correctly, but Obro is just more generally applicable to most situations. And also the thing that is really notable for Obro is that Azamba makes up for his lesser bulk with Renewal. Obro just needs less healing in the first place. And both of them are probably going to be able to fill the same combat roles just because they're going to hit those benchmarks because they're relatively easy to hit with rallies, sonics, meals, pair up, all that joy. It's just yeah. a matter of whether Obro's damage mitigation or the healing from Azama is more worth it. Again, you gotta find that specific use case. So if you do end up using Azama as one of your carries, he will be able to do the job. He does have just enough stats to reach the benchmarks even with a level 10 promotion. But how does he compare to the standard that we've been using in all these videos to, for comparison, which is a level 5 Master Ninja promoted level 20 Saizo? So at an equivalent internal level, Azam will have 2 more HP, 1 less attack, 4 less speed thanks to being in Mechanist and not Master Ninja. 23 less hit, oh no. Saizo's skill stat is super good, it just dwarfs everything else anyone can bring to the table. Azama also has 13 less avoid, 5 less dodge. They have the same defense, but Azama has 3 less resistance. Now, these are comparable enough that Azama will probably be able to accomplish similar tasks as Saizo. Azama will probably do just fine. And he does make up for some of the stat deficit with uh, Poet Potion. The extra sustain on Azama allows him to be a bit more self-sufficient than Saizo, just because he gets more value out of vulnerabilities and concoctions, and he can use them on player phase in addition to attacking, which is just an extra layer of bulk in addition to renewal. So Azama does have significant advantages over Saizo, but Saizo just requires less effort to get here. Yeah. Saizo, you can just turn off your brain and he'll do everything for you. And if you want, you can spend two seals on Saizo to get Vantage and have just better overall bulk. Mm -hmm. Which is probably worth it because Saizo with Vantage is really, really safe and really, really good. You don't have to worry about reaching those one round thresholds because you can just Vantage them on the next turn and hey, they'll be dead. It's like Azama still hits those one run benchmarks with these stats, even though they're lesser. And again, you have yeah. renewal, so you hit them. You're not as good yeah. at everybody else hitting them, but you hit them. Now, this is the conventional way to make a physical Azama, but Azama does have a magic stat, so how does magic Azama do? Here we have him getting an A plus support with Subaki in order to raise his lance rank early to make him the best possible magical combat unit that you can get him to be. So his class pathing is going to be level 7 to level 12 as Monk, level 12 to level 20 as Sky Knights, using the big fountain of lance experience that he gets from chapters 14 and 15, if he's able to raise his lance rank to D by that point. He also spends 5 levels in Great Master just to get Renewal because that's what he has over the other magical units and we want to give him every advantage that we possibly can. 
So how does he look after that? If you compare him to Saizo, he will have better defense and resistance and HP, and he will have less effective attack, but he will be attacking on magic, which means their attack is going to be comparable, if not Azama being a bit better. Though, Azama will still have deficiencies in attack speed, hits, and avoids. But Azama, as a magic unit, is pretty solid if you're able to get him enough experience when unpromoted. So I did some math, because I was curious, because I hadn't super messed around with Bolt 9 out of super much. At 25, he can one round every enemy on Camilla's map that's a generic, save for the sorcerers, nice. which he is one damage short on. Yeah. And all you need is a C support with either Sakura or Orochi for the plus one magic if they're in on Miyoji. Wow, okay, yeah. Which is pretty nice, actually, because his bolt's yeah. pretty good. Uh, the big problem that I found, though, was that 108 hit. Yeah. It's not doing him any favors, but he does, again, get to try again with his good bulk renewal. He can just hold forward on that map, and it works. And this is, again, if he's 25, his stats are likely going to be higher because you're going to be a little bit above that point in the level curve. It's just these are the stats I had on hand to compare against. So as, as much as I do like Mechanist, I think this is probably a better option, having learned it. So Azama has some pretty stiff competition when it comes to being a magic carry, though, because Rinka also exists, and Rinka requires way less efforts to get to the point where she can be a magic carry. She starts in Oni Savage, which allows her to train her axe rank immediately and get the Bolt Axe as soon as it's dropped in Chapter 14. So if you raise Renka just staying in Oni Chieftain, she will be very impressive. With a Bolt Axe at promoted level 5, she will have 25 magic attack with the Bolt Axe, which can be boosted by 4 with her personal skill, which you can make active at basically any point by just chugging an HP tonic, which beats Azama's magic attack out. The Bolt X does have lower hits than the Bolt Naginata. Rinka just has so much more defense that it might not matter if she isn't able to hit because she can just take so little damage from enemies that she has unlimited tries to land those hits. Her one big problem is just that she sucks against home users, and that's the only complaint that I can really have with Rinka is that, that poor resistance and losing all her accuracy from Axe rank versus home users. But yeah, no, those stats are just really, really good. And Rinka also, just again, as you said, zero effort. And if you expend even a little bit of effort in Rinka, you can get her some cheat skills like Magic Plus 2, and that's really good for her, I find, because it just guarantees her one rounding and lets her use uh, more accurate weapons if you need those. The sheer amount of investments you need to do to Azama to get to this point compared to Renka who can just continue leveling up, building her axe rank, and start killing things. Yeah, Renka is pretty hard to beat. It's like, both of them even have kind of rough starts, but Renka's is maybe is for the fact that she is, one, not staff-locked, and two, the fact that she has access to Branch of Fate, meaning that you can get her a little bit of experience on that map. And it's definitely possible to get Renka to derank axes before the end of Chapter 5. So, Renka's start is not as bad as people say if you're willing to put in the work during those early chapters. No, I think a lot of people just go into those chapters with plan to build Kaze because they're going to play Conquest and they try Birthright and they never did anything for Rinka, so she comes out looking way worse. Yeah. But yeah, her use case is slightly different with the enemies she can take, but for enemies that both of them can handle, she does a bang up job and it's a very minor difference in their defense and it's made up for with Renewal, but it's again that price of investment, which is pretty hefty. Renewal is the one thing that sets Azama apart from most of his competition, but it's a question of how you play, I think, that makes it worth it. Yeah. Azama is a good recipient of investment, but there are so many units that can do what he does with so much less investment that it's hard to really justify using him on a team if he's not going to be one of your main focuses, basically. And in doing this and learning a lot more about Versailles as I went through this is that Azama is, I think, basically the bare minimum combat unit because he will hit all the relevant benchmarks. His bulk is acceptable. He has options. It's just, it takes a lot more to get those options. 
But if you get those options, he is performing about the same as anybody else who... He doesn't need boosters, he can just work with seals and temporary boosters, and he'll hit the benchmarks, and he'll work as a carry. Just, you have options to take less effort and less resources. Yeah, Azala can do so many things, but it requires more work. Being able to be both a magic carry and a physical carry isn't something that most units are able to do, and Azama just has the stats to do everything that he wants to, but it does come with some trade-offs. It's a fun puzzle, in my opinion, to just think about, okay, how do you leverage all these options this guy has to try and make something out of it, and it's good for unit feel, but it's really, really rough for making him as a carry, because again, all those extra resources. Now, we've been talking about Azama primarily as a combat unit, but you can also do some funny stuff because this is Fates, and you have a lot of reclassing options. Now, if you want to make Azama a really funny support <laughs> unit, I have here a particularly interesting build. Now, Azama can go from level 7 to 10 in Monk to get Miracle and Rally Luck. He can promote to Great Master as soon as possible to get Renewal, and start training his Lance rank to get to the Bolt Maginata. From there, he can go into Falcon Knight through his friendship with Tsubaki and get access to Falcon Knight and get access to Darting Blow camaraderie and the highly desirable Rally Speed, after which he can jump into Mechanist and get access to Potion Potion and Quick Salve to help with his sustain in the front lines, along with Golden Bane to just get that skill out of the way. Then he jumps into Strategist and gets access to the crazy set of skills Res Plus 2, Jantium, Rally Resistance, and Inspiration earlier than most of your other units can have access to it. He can hop back into Mechanist, which he has natural access to thanks to his Apothecary access. To get Replicate, he can jump into Omiyoji to get Rally Magic thanks to his monk class line. He can jump into Kinchi Knight thanks to Subaki friendship to get air superiority and Amaterasu which is the healing aura. And he can jump back into Butler to end in a 1-2 range shuriken class and get access to lift to serve and continue to help heal your team. This is a really funny build because it allows him to spend most of his time in staff using classes so he can still provide support that way, while still being a sufficient combat unit. It's really funny. So when you first showed this to me, I was just giggling for a good few minutes, because Fates is such a wonderful game with the V-class options it lets you to do. The fact that you can just turn him into the ultimate support bot and still give him decent combat is wonderful. Ignore the fact that it costs this, that's probably what, 1600g for all that Yeah. Thing. <laughs> just don't worry yeah. about it. But Inspiration, Replicate, that's a really, really good combination. He will have access to four rallies by the end of the game. You can get it earlier than that if you're willing to change how you reclass. Mm -hmm. And Speed, Res, those are really, really good rallies to have in Birthright. He also has good enough sustain if you choose to build him that way with Renewal, Potent Potion, and Quick Self, so that he can chug a Vulnerary and continue to rally. Replicate allows him to basically do whatever he wants anywhere in the map because you can have two Azamas. He also has access to the really good auras in the form of Jantium, Inspiration, and Amaterasu, along with Lift Serve, which allows him to further heal himself. He really does suffer from the five skill slot syndrome, but when you have these choices, yeah. We just get to pick and choose for every single map. You get to look at what you need and take what you have. There isn't much to say about this because it's just, congratulations, you've built the ultimate support. He has so many options. Ignore the fact that his magic stat is probably a little less than you want. Now, the thing that he has over Jacob and Felicia, who get the skills earlier, is that Jacob and Felicia's hard seal classes are taken up by skills that don't really help with a supporting role, while Azama has access to replicates through his hard seal class, which is kind of crazy. They have to marry or do friendship for specific things, and I don't think they have the same options in getting all these support skills that Azama does. But I don't think Felicia gets rally speed without marriage, for example, and I think she has to marry to get replicate. So having the ability to have any selection of these skills on the same unit is really nice. 
it really isn't going to be the most practical builds, but... You can just have some fun building a unit. It's, it's great. And unlike a lot of the other units that you're going to be doing wacky skill builds with, Azama has the stats to survive in any of these classes, and they're really not bad. I think the hardest point would be on Miyochi getting Rally Magic there, but again, you can just do that earlier potentially if needs be, and it'll still probably work out fine. All right. Is there anything you want to plug at the end of this? Uh, I guess obligatory shout outs to the unofficial Gay Fates mod as I work on that. But uh, the bigger thing I want to say is just try Birthright out. If you're a Conquest player, it's different in ways that I found engaging. And there's value in just trying out that. And because I feel like I just know Fates way better having done this. Yeah, just so many people don't know the power of Potion Potion Quick Salve. It's so good. The, the people need to play with Hayato. They need to play with Hayato as a carry. 